I have money. I sold something. The armor. Right? What'd you get for it? Uh, 200 marks. Yeah. You got robbed. But that happens. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm going back now, 30 years. New York City, pawn shop, 23rd and West. Guy give me $500. Welcome back to the harbor. I'm your host, the Kino Cowboy. I'm here with Casher and Scott, and we're back on the Wim Winders train. A few episodes ago, we talked about Paris, Texas, which is quite different from what we're talking about today. Yeah, very. Today, we're talking about possibly one of the most German movies of all time. It's so German. Well, it's like it's desire. Because it's uh, what Bruce Gans starts in the stars in this, and like one of his last features was playing Hitler. So yeah, it's like, this is the most German movie since Triumph of the Will. I'll say that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> but but not as good. But no, this is much better. Um, I enjoy the hell out of this movie. Cool, yeah, yeah it was good. It's, it's um beautiful movie. To me, it's one of those movies that stuck with me. Like you know, like majority of these movies that we do on the cast, it's me wanting to revisit shit that really started to influence me in my cinematic career, either in my late tens or early twenties. And this is one of those that um, stuck with me because it's a beautiful portrait of humanity. And not only that, it's also a portrait of Germany and it's very like right before the wall is taken down and stuff. And and I'm glad that it's it's featured prominently in the movie too. Oh, absolutely. Purposefully. Plus, we got Columbo in this motherfucker. I know, dude. You fucking <laughs> crazy. Peter Falk, the, the dude, I was so twist surprised. With Columbo, with, with Peter Falk, was, it was good. It was yeah, interesting. Because, like, made sense. It was interesting. He, he played himself. He we played himself even... in this fucking art movie, you know, and he's such, like, this old fashioned, you know, guy. He's Grizzled so cool. actor. He's, he's so, so cool. cool. Yeah, uh, we haven't even guy. said the name of this film yet. It's no, uh, oh, Wings of Desire. Yo, <laughs> Wings of Desire. Yeah. Der Himmel über Berlin. I keep calling. I keep calling it good. Fallen Angels in my head. <laughs> There's too many angel movies. Y'all, uh, yeah, I forget. Y'all both took German, so in high school, <laughs> I don't remember anything. I have been to Germany, and and all I have was my German one memory, where it was I was just like, oh, broke. That means bread, which I can also tell because I see fucking bread in the window. So that's not very helpful anyway. Uh but yeah. Well, this um this um is the ex expat. Um this did capture Berlin. Um, although Berlin is super modernized and almost like the Pacific Northwest now, but in like history. God, Berlin's just filled with sex clubs and debauchery now yeah you can you can get frozen poop to use as a dildo (laughs) my buddy's going to berlin to see billy strings in august and i was like you gotta buy some frozen shit dude yeah dude and (laughs) and the age of consent's like 14 or something all right i didn't tell him that that's weird (laughs) (laughs) i'm not advocating it's pretty weird (laughs) Uh... (laughs) make it sound like a tourist just so you know guys (laughs) (laughs) pro travel tip from scott key (laughs) That's fucked it's up. Weird. It's a weird town. Oh. It is. Uh, cool. But like, it, we watched one. I cannot remember the name of the movie. From we, I had took a Central European culture in college. We watched a film that was set around the same time period, and I think uh, this captures a lot more of the humanity aspects of it. And that the other one was a little bit more political. Uh, okay. it's got Daniel Bruhl in a like the one of his first roles in the 90s. But, um, dude, I really, really loved that this was about for one, it reminded me of like Angels in the Outfield, that's just <laughs> me, uh, a little bit more complex, you know. Uh, banger, yeah, Angels in the movie. Outfield is way more complex than this. It's duh, dude. Uh, no, I really enjoyed the whole uh, fucking perspective changes where it's like black and white for the angels and then when you realize that there's it's just the human life it's in color 
Yeah. Uh, I really like that. You know? yeah, it's and it's it's real simple. Yeah, but it's super simple, but it's so effective. It's effective. And you also don't have to, as a director and cinematographer, you have to know how to light in both. Um, yes. Although that, that's different. Although if you know how to light in the 80s, if you know how to light in black and white, it's not like you don't know how to light in color at that point. It's not no, like the 50s true. where they're still figuring it out. You know, or now where color grading and lighting is complete garbage on every fucking blockbuster that's come out in the last 10 years. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Five years. But uh, yeah, anyway. They just do it. Let's do it in post. <laughs> Let's do it in post. Yeah. So we'll get AI to do it in post. Okay. Well, <laughs> the the movie's fascinating because it's you follow mainly two angels who kind of uh are on earth to spectate they have they have mild influence on humans as they please but a lot of it is like just spectating uh, I, I noticed a lot of it's like comforting like they don't really touch yeah. anybody who's not going through it right uh, like and they are affected deeply by the human fucking condition yeah. um and i know it's in the middle of the movie but one of the scenes that like really fucking affected me was the scene where the kid is sitting on the ledge of a roof and he's yeah. trying to comfort him and the kid jumps anyway and he just lets out that fucking nine that no and it fucking like that resonated i was like Whoa. yeah because it's like they can comfort and do minimal stuff like that but they can only do so much well and... it's like i expected more to be done not necessarily and that's what i realized like their powers only are so much because like there's that point where he this guy is like completely he's on the train uh he's sitting there and he's frantic about his wife leaving him and things like that uh and then like the angel sticks his hand on his shoulder and he starts to rethink more rationally and more optimistic and so and then he realized that's not going to work for everybody yeah it just and that's so that's such yeah. a depressing but that's yeah, unfortunately that's life. how that's how life is and like i'll be honest like I, I cried that scene when i watched like i had to pause it and like just kind of collect yeah. myself because that's a fucking powerful scene but the difference for me watching it this time than compared to last time last time i was aggressively single and sad and uh, you know i'm still hey, i still me, guys. i know i still struggle with uh Existential stuff, depression, thing, uh, my future, constantly thinking about my future and what I'm worth as a person, what I can leave behind to if I, you know, what even in the grand scheme of things, if it even matters, if I'm even remembered even slightly, stuff like that. But the way that they can kind of um, just help see people, help people see certain things that they're struggling with in like a slightly different angle and maybe kind of think through it. A little more rationally that spoke me to me in a way because um my partner and i kind of help each other in those areas now we work together as a team like i help her when she's thinking irrationally about, uh, about things and she helps me see things a different way and just to, good. it's good to have that in my life it really helps me uh kind of reevaluate things instead of just fucking gun hoeing it with my thoughts or if my thoughts escalate when i start thinking about death or anything like that i'm able to find comfort in her so when i was seeing that portrayed by these angels it really spoke to me in that way this time that's gay yeah <laughs> um, i was and, gonna uh, ask do you think the angels are gay to undercut all these emotions I bet they like to fucking go clubbing in Berlin. It's fucking Berlin, dude. They probably fuck everything. Yeah, their uh, sexuality in Berlin is yes. But it's it's a <laughs> it's an interesting setup. Like for uh, technically, it's like mythological. It, you know, it's like a its own well, world yeah, building. It's absolutely mythological. There's scenes where they show the beginning of what they do, and they're just standing on like a like a lake with one tree there yeah like they they talk about how they were here before history started right and it's a fascinating way to world build and also like you really think about their existence they've been around forever and they just keep on keeping on but they can't technically like they pick up objects but it's just like a 
it's not they're not really interacting with the earth and stuff yeah. and it's interesting that in this movie that G- god has given them enough free will to decide if they want to enter the realm yeah. of the living i find that really fascinating that they well, here's the thing uh i was reading uh, i got on the wiki after this because i was pretty interested in just reading what what they had here god's actually not mentioned in this film once no. yeah uh and then there are actual sequels to this which I, i'll eventually watch if i'd like to but um they state that that the only time it's ever stated that God is referred to is in the sequel, and it's the purpose is to connect humans with Him. Yeah. So it's it's I guess that sense of calming it's, is it's, you get a sense a vague sense of a power a higher power above them, and that they're working for something. They're cataloging. They're you know scribes, librarians, basically. Yeah. Um, for what purpose we don't really know. Um. Let me ask you this. I want to go back to this. When you watch this first time, did you find the movie uplifting or depressing or somewhere in between? Um, a little bit of both, but uh, I'd probably say uplifting because it something about it was powerful to me that this angel who basically uh, has is a master of eternity and and gets to look at humanity from afar and observe everything. I thought it was interesting that, that he wants to reject eternity basically and become human. Yeah. It's super powerful. And, um, cause the concept of eternity is something I struggled with around when I was around eight or nine years old, that concept freaked me out when I really started thinking deep about my religion. Cause I grew up hardcore Christian and, I was starting to poke holes in everything and that frightened the shit out of me. And I, I kept saying like, well, heaven keeps going on forever. My mom's like, yeah. And I was like, I don't want it to, uh, to me in my head. I don't know if it was like OCD or something, but I wanted there to be like some finite in for some reason. And I don't know why, but like, no, I get that. It's um, there, there's this kind of, I don't know if you'd call it a sketch or what, but there's a chapter in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy in one of those books where there's an immortal and he's just incredibly bored. And he asks like the AI, what's the movie I've seen the least amount of times? And they name some random movie that he's only seen 535 times because <laughs> uh, he's that bored from being immortal. Um, so I always thought of it like that, unless you're just like, I don't know, I always imagine heaven. Of you're just like hooked up to the god machine and it's like a constant spiritual orgasm and you're just like <laughs> like that's the only thing that makes sense to me uh infinity is you know doesn't pertain to like humanity uh everything that is human and makes our emotions and our experiences so great is because there is a finite time is because that there is an ending. There is there is a beginning and an ending. Until it's all I about the, the it's all about the dash mark in between, guys. <laughs> <laughs> My parents live in Ohio. I live in the moment. <laughs> but it, but it, but it, it, when you don't have that sense of prolong like just existence forever, like you tend to take things in. I'm sure there are so many things that these angels have forgotten. Yeah. That it's like nothing has been completely impactful on them. Yeah, they're probably like, man, I used to speak Babylonian, but I don't remember a word of it. Anymore. <laughs> but really, that's a, that's a good reference. Um, no, but uh, even like uh, even um, even as a kid, I was like, well, who made God? God couldn't have been around forever. And yeah, they're like, yeah, he was around forever, and that made me freak out even more. But then, um. um Heard someone talking um, about how, like, they weren't afraid of uh, death because they've already experienced it, basically, because they're like, well, think of what do you remember before you were born? Nothing. Exactly. So there you go. I've heard a pin Gillette say that. Ultra expert atheist. Super atheist. Super atheist. Pin Gillette. (laughs) Um... So, 
one one thing it doesn't address and smartly does not address is the sense of an afterlife because the yeah. common misconception, first of all, that we die and become angels. Um, we die and become nothing. No, um, but we die in the Bible. That's not a thing. Angels are also biblically accurate. Angels is its own meme, and this movie would have been better with that. But we'll we'll not touch that. <laughs> They're just like. 30 eyed wheels within wheels. Like, it's just the Evangelion, but Bayonetta enemies. Um the <laughs> yeah, more sexy bayonetta witches would have been made as pretty good. <laughs> uh but the they don't address um so when the angel, main angel, dies, uh, is there an afterlife that he gets to go? Does he become an angel again? Because I it think it's just existence very- stops. Yeah. I don't think I, well, it was never that you die and become an angel in the Bible. It was like some they people were, act like that is they were like their own separate entities, yeah, you know, chosen by God and all that. The it, the what the movie is to me is it's uh only being able to spectate humanity from afar and only interact somewhat really not at all is like its own existential conundrum and having that existential conundrum as an angel is a uh, really cool and especially because you know they are self-aware and why 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 would this higher being or god even give them free will or free thought the most interesting part about the whole him giving up being an angel is that he's had millennia to decide this and it's a it's a woman, and he falls in love with one acrobat. Yeah, well, she is flexibility, dude. Looking. Flexibility goes a long way. Uh, pretty sexy, but uh, it's just it's a beautiful story because he's had millennia to see. I'm sure millions and millions of beautiful women coming to fall. He's probably seen Cleopatra and like just traditionally the most beautiful women on the planet, and it's one. You know, it's a failing circus, so like it gets shut down. It's a ghetto circus. Yeah, it's like it's something that she does out of the passion for it. And I think it's not only her beauty, but like her passion for what she wants to do and what she loves that really brings him to a point of being like, Well, fuck, I want to experience this love of something, and also I'd like to experience it with you. Yeah. Her you love know? for her art is very pure. That's what I'm saying, like, because like, it is. In, Cause like uh, about, the the circus, I I have I actually did randomly meet this one circus chick one time, and she she thought of herself as an artist, which I never would have thought of <clears throat> an acrobat or whomever necessarily as an artist. But oh, it, no, it does strike aren't. me as an interesting choice because it, it is, if you want to say it's an art form or a form of expression. It's incredibly niche, you know, hard to get into. You have to live, I mean, I heard to become a clown, you have to live almost a monastic lifestyle, go to clown college, do all that stuff. And it's just to entertain people. Yeah. And because what is the content, you know, outside of just pure entertainment? It's It's kind of just what a circus is. And and it's appreciation of the human form and athleticism and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's also just goofiness for kids in a very chaotic looking circus with a lot. Well, it's goofiness for kids, but then it gets more complex than that. I have a really, really good friend. Her name is Courtney. Shout out Sacred Somatics. She runs a circus business. Like she does circus arts. Um, it's she does like she's able to do fire twirl like spinning and dancing, and she does yeah. uh, she's on stilts and things like that. There is a definite like infantile like this is entertaining because it's like a circus thing but then he pulling shit that's like Cirque du Soleil that builds like an incredibly beautiful story around these different types of acrobatics and dance it's it's almost like a form of dance no like, I at, at here's physical the physical level to me that's my point is both like high level experimental Cirque du Soleil and having a fun performance for kids are equally valid and yes. to me. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and I hate that people can have like a weird stance because something is for like children or like children are easily entertained as if that's it's, like a I, lesser art or something. No, I, I really hate, hate that. that. And like entertainment and art when you're a child is probably the most important and impactful stuff 
you're going to think it's going to shape your worldview. The stories, whether that's cultural myths or literally stories, we're told as children is what shapes us for all yeah. our lives. Um, Shout out Son Goku. The <laughs> and yeah, so it, it it is an odd thing, and and there is purity in that. Um, and there's a problem. I I especially struck me because this week, uh, just I interact with a lot of film buffs on the internet and there's just like this like thing of like labeling these movies a certain like animated movies as like kids movies and they treat them differently and i'm like you want to respect animation but you're labeling these things as kids movies and then Wait, acting a movies? certain different way about it like uh, like the new puss in boots i'm like that's bullshit this, that uh, makes no, me no, fucking that's angry a, look there's a dip like just because there's a difference between Puss in Boots and Coco Melon movies, right? But also, but also, I'm saying like, just because a movie is for all ages, anyone can go see it, doesn't mean it's like a less kid. valid cultural. Yeah, Dude, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And Puss in so Boots weird is like one of the most complicated movies dealing with like death and mortality that I've seen in years. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. Like, I could say like Madagascar or something, and I'd still say that's valid. Like, I hate that people. They want to say animation is is more than it's not a genre, it's an art form, but then they want to fucking be pretentious and uh have a high horse over like saying, Oh, I enjoyed this, even though it's a kid's movie. And it's like, what? Yeah, well that's that's just bullshit. Not, you know, that obviously there's exceptions, movie. like the Paw Patrol the movie. Obviously, I wouldn't want to walk in and you be watching Paw Patrol the movie, but what would you think if I was walking in alone? watching paw patrol i'd be very Trump interested crying. in why my <laughs> issue with wanting to watch bluey as a single 30 year old male uh and it's like fuck i'm not gonna watch that no i just <laughs> um <laughs> it's a really strange thing um to it, me. it is um but then you get people like the bronies <laughs> and that culture Okay, like, well, it's not just the kids show. I well, we can, we can talk about terrible animation fandoms all cast long. <laughs> but, yeah. I think it's interesting. A circus is another reason a circus performer and acrobat is an interesting choice is because it's so tactile, you know, and it which and there's that connection with the world and connection with physical form in your body. I think that's another reason it was a circus performer, other than just oh, they're free spirited, yada yada yada. I um, think uh, I think very acrobat, different if it was a musician, which or a composer rather, yeah, uh, which is not tactile. It's kind of the opposite mm -hmm. uh, if you're composing. I um, think uh, acrobatics have a lot of similarities towards like uh, dance and like interpretive dance, and because you can tell story through series of flips and turns. Which, and I didn't know that certain the Soleil or however the hell you say it. Um, Dude, yeah, Cirque du Soleil has a fucking too much French in this movie. Um, <laughs> it's got a lot of compelling fucking. But even stories. like in not Cirque du Soleil, even just a regular circus performance, you can tell a story, and that could be very yeah. artistic. So, it's like um, it, it's a uh, another movie we did on this cat, La Dolce Vita. There's yeah. that clown in there who like he has the sad music, and there's the balloons following him around or whatever. Yeah. Like, there's I mean, that's that, very simple comparatively to a Vegas show, but there's that episode of Hey Arnold where he he, he dreams that he's the doing Figaro and he's got the Figaro and that's uh, opera. That's a whole nother. I'm episode. just saying, there's a clown in that, dude. I'm <laughs> doing a podcast with two clowns right now. <laughs> um, so that wow. that's that's interesting, but it, it's I. I, again, I want to go back to like the whole forced perspective change because like the black and white, it's like that until you get to these human moments. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, I don't think there's very many movies that do that that well. Uh, or uh, yeah. Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Wizard of Oz is the only one I could think of. Um, so, well, it's a ballsy know. move. I mean, even it though is. it's very simple, I think any audience, even though this is an art film, I would say, or, you know, adjacent to pretty art house. Um, it's something that I think anybody would understand that gr film grammar, cinematic grammar, yeah, pretty easily. I mean, again, it's in Wizard of Oz, which is also I use it a kids movie. movie. Um, but shit, I had a point. I do you think oh. it's? Go ahead. I'm sorry. How many people 
in their day to day are simply viewing their lives through a black and white lens, you not appreciating what is in front of them. It's true, though. I mean, shit. Um, this movie I- made me appreciate like my morning coffee, my shitty Kroger brand coffee more, which is such a simple thing. And that's half the reason I drink coffee. It's not even the caffeine. Like, I really do enjoy the routine of like waking up and making, and you have this hot beverage. Sure. Um, coffee and, and a cigarette every morning. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, I bet if I, I would love coffee and cigarettes, and that's why I don't smoke. Cause I yeah, would love it's, it. Uh, I sit out on my balcony <laughs> yeah. while it's still kind of cold out with a yeah. cup of coffee God, and a cigarette. That sounds awesome. It's Sorry. super nice. <laughs> I guess. I guess I could go get a pack or get a dude, black. No, no, one, of my no, favorite, no. one of my favorite moments, and it's just a mundane human experience is after you've been up all fucking night and you're starting to settle down everybody's asleep you've been hanging out as you go sit on the fucking front porch you make that first cup of coffee take that first fucking drag of a cigarette and nothing feels like it it's so fucking good it like grounds you it kind of calms you and then you're like all right let's fucking either stay up the rest of the day or go to bed you know and then you get everyone up to go gamble no i'm just kidding (laughs) That's but that, that's coming. <laughs> but no, that, that is really what this movie is about, and it made me appreciate that because I've been so I've been in a weird way struggling because I'm not struggling, and what I mean is the past few years have been kind of chaotic for me and for everyone. But um, it's just your twenties, and I'm settling into my thirties. I got like a, a stable career started, um, and I'm like moved into a nice apartment, you know, pretty decent apartment and stuff. Um, and I and part of me is on edge kind of like a wild animal that's like you put it in a cage i'm like wait what's next why is why is the zookeeper bringing me food i don't have to Dude, hunt what's going on i fucking yeah. resonate with i always anticipate something bad when i've had something good and i almost get like i almost crave it sometimes which yeah is so fucked well there there no there is something to be said about growing through adversity um and, and i think as you get more settled in life you have to introduce more challenges which a lot of people don't do that they don't challenge themselves they don't want to challenge themselves i mean even if that's something is like i'm gonna take a brazilian jiu-jitsu class even something as simple as that um or i'm gonna learn a you know guitar when i'm 40 years old yeah but also like uh, covid yeah when everything shut down it, it get a lot of people took that time to learn a new trade or skill or something and it, it allowed a lot of people to really stand back and look at their at their lives and readjust and stuff. So I played a lot of Doom. I ate a uh, bunch of acid. I wish I wish I had I wrote used a book. it better. I need the external stimulation. Um, but also I'm just I'm a slow worker writer anyway. Um, but who who knows where it comes from? Um, because the I've been trying to sit down and write my own stuff and it just hasn't been coming. But then if I get around and pace and just like talk to myself that for some reason that works. Um, but also that might just be because trying to do what I do. But yeah, it, it does. This movie does. I mean, that is the central thesis as, as much as of appreciating those creature comforts and little things and human connection, um, which obviously plays back into the divided Germany theme of this movie, um, which is something that is, I mean, it's weird to think a, not a superpower, but a global power, the, the biggest economy in Europe and one of the biggest economies in the world is was 30 some odd years ago completely split in two. Yeah. And that division yeah. still felt, and you can tell a difference in like just the buildings and the infrastructure on the sides of Berlin. Um, and, and, I mean, it's all pretty good now. It's been long enough, but it, it's, it's really trippy to think about how it was not that long ago yeah no, it, it absolutely is it the germans like, are nothing if not resilient jesus christ yeah the film yeah in that way is a portrait of germany at, at that very specific time and it's really in a way kind of still showing uh, some of their struggles even 40 years after world war ii still finding their footing um you know like literally and figuratively because you see some of the ruins of the old world and like i don't know there it feels like a lot of people around are trying to find their voice and stuff and it it even juxtaposes like old post-war footage with like the contemporary stuff oh yeah the really hammer at home yeah i mean hell berlin as a city was just destroyed i mean they they yeah. 
that's one reason it works well and is nice now is because they fucking had to rebuild it in the 20s no for sure i'm actually watching something that is dealing with like the berlin wall still has just been taken down yeah and just like the amount of divide that was still there after that yeah um you know people still resilient on the whole ideals of the past uh but i think it does have a lot to say especially because if you look at one side of the wall it's barbed wire mines fucking you know razor wire all that stuff armed guards and you look at this side that they're on a lot of the time and he's wanting to experience the artwork that is painted on that wall yeah Uh, it's one of the first things he does after he realizes he's bleeding and he's excited about bleeding is he questions he goes what's that color what's that color yeah blau and he goes no i think it's actually this and he's like oh okay and he's like experiencing art and color for the first time because apparently the black and white that we're getting is the vision that they actually have uh they don't really know what color is yeah it's the hammer and the 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 uh what's it called the stolid nature of the angels like, yeah the... like they they can appreciate and spectate but they are they don't have the actual touch well it, it makes me curious like it makes the me, germans it's curious because like they don't sense color and things like that and like they don't sense touch obviously they can do you think they hear outside noises well that's the yeah they do but it's just interesting because a lot of the movie is like from their perspective at first you get a lot of it's a lot of soft whispers a lot of low and quiet and calming kind of noises and sounds and as soon as he becomes human you hear this loud ass helicopter oh yeah shit clinging down like a big thing i'm thinking of is like he goes to the club uh where there is uh a pretty badass band playing yeah, I nick cave is there. It's fucking yeah. nick cave is in this fucking, movie which i forgot that? about until insane. i rewatched it um uh, but like he he's there and the, you hear the music but you also hear the back thoughts of the the uh the the singer which one of my favorite bits he's like i'm not gonna tell him it's about a girl i'm not gonna tell him it's about a girl <laughs> this song's about a girl <laughs> and he immediately goes into it yeah uh, but it makes you wonder like does he under do does music transcend to both <laughs> The humanity and yeah, I'm, more I'm sure holy. they. I'm sure. Well, that's how I took it. I kind of got way deeper with it. Maybe no, no. no I'm this sure movie they... does that very intelligently. It it makes you ask questions. Well, it's like it's like does does music transcend and follow into different realms where everybody is connected and can culturally and significantly hear it and bond over it? And it's well, like because that's the only types of scenes you see him. Like where you actually hear fully the outside world is when he's experiencing music in the club. They can only, I mean, to they can only appreciate so much from their perspective because I'm just wondering if they're able to perceive music like we are. Oh, I'm sure they. they, One thing I think they can, but there's still going to be that disconnect for sure. But that just makes me think more uh, of the brain of like music kind of transcends. It's kind of universal language. Yeah, that and math. Um. I, I think part of it is they're benevolent beings, so they appreciate the people appreciating it. For yes. sure. Oh, I can see that for sure. Yeah. Um, I do want to go up. There's another bit that I liked in this, because there's not a whole lot of bits in this movie, but there's some good jokes. Why are you calling them bits? Because I think that's why I call them. Shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> they it's whatever he goes oh, yeah, with. Yeah. Well, mean? for the twist of the movie, one of the big twists is Peter Falk is actually an angel who chose to be mortal. Which is fucking mind blowing. But the first thing he tells the guy is like, So, how much did you get for the armor? Oh, yeah. He tells him like 200 francs. He's like, Oh, he ripped you off. It <laughs> <laughs> uh, happens every day. Because, yeah, they don't really like you have your angelic armor, like that falls with you. Like you remove that almost and it's with you. Like that's an interesting way to show that yeah. he shed his wings. He wasn't, he, he had clothes on when he came to Earth, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He yeah, woke up in the same clothes he's wearing. You just never understand that. I guess the, the armor that comes along with it. Yeah, but I will. Um, that is funny though, and um, I like that uh, Peter Falk. At first, you just think, "Oh, this guy's he's he's just a really spiritual guy," which is surprising at first because oh, it's Columbo. He's really in tune with his spirituality. That's why he can sense this angel, and then the reveal just brings it home. But um. And I do like that um, 
he's physically talking aloud to these invisible angels and like the the lady trying the, to shake the hand with the so lady good. in the cart is like staring at him and stuff and it's it's a good it's a good touch and um well what interests me about that while we're talking about that apparently he has a script because we see him do it again later in the movie with the other angel oh yeah uh, with um what's it cassiel and it's like he has a script for this like he's done this before with other angels he's almost not not even in a bad way but like a attempt a tempter a he's an enlightenment man it's he's yeah. the, he's the snake he's a he, he is he's a bit of a come taste this forbidden knowledge but on, like, yeah he's not explicitly saying it the which thing is, is also though, kind of like a mirror to how much only slight influence they have when they're angels too so mm-hmm. it's kind of like a mirror to that in that way um, it's like the the whole temptation with the tree of fruit thing is one of those things that makes me realize god's a bastard um yeah we don't want you to know things that will help progress you as a society. but here's this tree here yeah but just to test it, you it's you know it's fault bro it's the it's the women, enlightenment dude. you know abolish all original women. sin and that's why they have pain during child labor because of eve <laughs> Jesus. That's why they have periods. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what the Bible says. Yeah, well, yeah, well. And like yeah. you, you were talking about earlier about the suicidal guy, and and I found that profound too, especially because he cries out in that way. But then you think about it, it's like this guy is seeing a million people kill themselves. And yeah, it's still, fucking still so heavily affected. It's value of human life like that. That's why it's so surprising that Cassiel doesn't make the jump too immediately. Yeah, but uh, also, yeah, he's got his own reasons. He he likes what he does, I guess. And, and yeah, he probably sees like there's value in there's value in just being a person on this earth and being a good person, um, even if you're not saving the world, starting soup kitchens, curing diseases, or whatever, um. And so you can live by example and just by being a good citizen in your community or whatever. Um, be but, a then, but, but then also Cassiel has his own duty. He's like, I can serve humanity this way. Yeah. It makes me wonder if like all angels end up going through the time of questioning and deciding to take the leap and that there's just a recycling of angels. Is, is this is this angel, is it a metaphor for losing your faith in God? Maybe. That's Maybe. kind of... It's kind of how I was a little bit interpreting it. Um, not necessarily losing your faith in God, but appreciating the the importance of humanity, not from a biblical perspective and morality and ethical stuff. Like you don't have to be worshiping a God to know what's right and wrong and what's beautiful and what's not beautiful. And so and, when he's, yeah. he has, a, it's like he has appreciation as an angel, of the beauties of the world, but it's not until he opens his mind and is able to, really break through into another realm that he really is able to fully experience and become like a be, be, realize the beauty what the true beauty of humanity is it's a lot like smoking dmt <laughs> what about the uh your uh, rogan podcast now yeah. i'm just saying <laughs> no but like um here? one of the things that like kind of uh gets to him though is like the trapeze artist she like just because the circus is over doesn't mean shit to her she knows that like life still goes on and she's immediately accepting of the change and goes with it which the angel he seems kind of shocked by how quickly she adapts to it and that really kind of throws him for a loop for a minute there Mm -hmm. and um also she's attractive so there's that too she yeah she passed away really that actress passed away really young i was yeah. looking at the i feel like my mom went every time i do that on the podcast where i'm like oh this actress and this actor's dead yeah my mom well, she'll bring up the most random morbid shit out of nowhere yeah my mom does that consistently but i was looking at uh who was still you know just all the actors and actresses in this and she passed away at like 45 yeah like real young okay. um it's like you ever you ever hear two old guys talk and they're just like, you remember this? Yeah. Oh, my, every you time I this? call my no, mom. You remember that guy? Yeah, he's dead. Do you remember that woman we lived next to in Detroit about, I don't know, 23 years ago? Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, his son passed away. Yeah. This it's is like, the okay. whole, they I'm just like, talk about, 
like who's like mom that's, still hanging on. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like I'm like mom. That's sad. I don't care. Like uh, I'm sorry. Not that sad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get pizza. that. It's just funny. Uh, the this uh, this actor Bruno Gans. He's like an iconic German actor. A lot of the stuff I've actually seen quite a few of his fucking movies. He's got a very uh, distinguished face. And his face is the iconic Hitler, the fucking one that everybody memed years ago. Oh, he's in Downfall. Yes. He's Hitler. He's Damn, Hitler Downfall, another angel. Which is a... <laughs> Shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Casher, I threw you off. <laughs> what were you saying? <laughs> Downfall's the shit. It's a great movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That I'm comment, still gonna dude, meme on it. Kanye West over here. <laughs> uh, but no, it's just like he's been in such iconic roles, and this they've named this movie as one of the best German films ever made. Yeah, and Downfall is also one of the a lot of people consider it as one of the best works he's done. Uh, but he's been in like the Maturian Candidate, the Reader, and fucking a bunch of shit that I've seen. Most of the American shit that I've seen. Oh, the house that Jack built by Lars von Trier. You know? Yeah, that's interesting. Also, how Wim Wenders can make such a fucking ins- like German as fuck movie, and then somehow also capture the Southwest of America most so well. Iconic America, one of the most iconic South America. Or like, South how the ever. fuck do you do that? That's insane. Impressive. I mean, he lived in America a while. You I know, know but... I do think there's something that there are aspects of a culture to you that are so normalized you don't think about them, but when you place a foreigner in that <clears throat> culture, it yeah. sticks out to them. And that's why I think if you're a particularly observant artist you can do that you can make art about another country if you've spent enough time there yeah yeah you can do blackface <laughs> and, and it's yep. just like um, <laughs> i'm gonna be like that guy you saw at the renaissance fair wearing a dashiki and playing drums that was so fucking weird. like hey guys I turned, the, I turned to the. I turned to the. I was in Ethiopia for two weeks okay so <laughs> I, was with like a group I can, I can wear a dashiki it's fine I was with like a group of people and there were like two POCs we had with us. And I turned to them because I was fucking hammered and I didn't want to say something real loud. And I was like, looked at them, was like, this look racist to y'all. They looked, they looked back at me and they're like, fuck yeah, dude. And I was like, okay, I'm not just fucked <laughs> but up. But it's benevolent racism. <laughs> sure it is. Yeah. Uh, kind of no, like, I, uh, I do think it's interesting how poignant he can make like these areas because I feel familiar, more familiar with Berlin than I have ever uh and then like after going to santa fe traveling through a pretty great distance in the southwest i was like man he accurately nailed this it's to be fair, fucking to crazy be fair, sense for a time and places man yeah. it's desert it's not hard to pick that it's a lot of fucking sand uh it's fucking no. dead it's dead no town. there's a vibe there's a vibe there. it's there's like there's no you, I go, I'm just, you gotta I'm just, go to like the cadillac graveyard and shit like that yeah. that's just like fucking tight or like the world's biggest ball of string um or I mean, the, even in this well, and like in the nick cave concert that old whatever former hell could have been a bomb factory for all we know that mm-hmm. former building that's a club now. That's very common. In, that's uh, so fucking like, sick. Like yeah. even stuff like the Kit Kat Club, that famous BDSM club, yeah, or whatever. Um, which is funny. I met some people who waited in line like two hours, but they didn't real like they were just like, "Let's go to this club I've heard of," but they didn't know what it was. So they were dressed <laughs> in like normal clubbing clothes, and they got they turned like, down because they didn't realize like, "Oh, I need to be wearing like studded leather and whatever." Under BDSM attire just seems uncomfortable. I don't know. It never... It's fucking dorky. Yeah. It's dorky. Oh. It's dorky. I keep trying to make jokes about it, but it doesn't work because I sound like a prude. I'm like, you might as well be wearing steampunk goggles to me. Hey, like, man, it's the same well, thing. It's whatever they man. I'm it's not going to say, I'm just saying it's as dorky as fucking. And also, you're going to hell. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah. but the, the, the whole like post industrial, we're going to convert this. I mean, you can even think about it in America. There's breweries and old warehouses. There are shit. industrial raves for a reason, friend. There's yeah thing. what else are they gonna do which is also um on the american side of things the the first matrix movie captures that really well too yeah it does uh matrix rob zombie completely different kind of thing but um also yeah, uh it's been really crazy before smartphones and stuff where you could just 
go wild. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think at some places they might confiscate, they may like put yours in a locker or something. Well, yeah, I was gonna say they have these things now. I don't know if you've been to a, where you like throw your Dave, butt. And you Dave snap Chappelle it. does it. Yeah, well, they do it at the Grove. You can't do it at uh, the comedy club. Good. Here. Good. In, uh, fucking could. Lowell, you can't. You have to like magnetize and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I've, I've cool. had to. I've had to. It throws me off, but I've had to ask people to stop filming politely. Oh, I, I do. I'm nice, but I'm just they like, had they hire my buddy Panda or my, uh, another comic Conrad to film and take pictures. So you're gonna have your shit filmed for your personal use. Sure, we'll have pictures for promotion and stuff. You won't have to worry about someone being on their fucking phone. Yeah. Which I was a drunk, I was a drunk asshole last Lowell show. That was my ending of fucking sober January. So I was like twelve Bud Lights. Yeah, now it's fucked up February beer. for Casher. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're about to get into Cheers. March. Yeah, that's a large beer. Um, three of them. That's a, it's it's a German movie. You gotta you gotta well, drink. Yeah, and um, Keystone like? Light. We're sponsored by Keystone Light. Yeah, no, we're not. The, we're the sponsored German by beer my book. of choice. <laughs> Go buy my book. Uh, did you see stuff. that there's an American remake of this? Uh, what? Is it Angels of the Outfield? <laughs> no. Let me pull <laughs> it up. The, the, there's an American remake of this. Uh, let me find where it was. It's got like Nick Cage in it. What? Oh. No. City of Angels. Oh, yeah. I've heard of this movie. I didn't realize. Uh, yeah, Nick Cage and Meg Ryan. I don't want to see this what? shit. Fuck yeah, there's a some fuck critics movie. judging it to be a mockish adaptation. <laughs> That's polite. I found yeah. it rather gauche. Gosh, how you say that? <laughs> Fucking Nick Cage is like the main angel. I mean, they kind of look like each other, Bruce Gans and Nick what Cage. What they need to do is have Nick Cage play an angel and then also play Hitler in a movie. It's That's it's not the easy. worst remake ever. Oh yeah, they need to have him play it. They have the fucking Spike Lee old boy remake, which is fucking Stupid. awful. Spike Lee is you're better than that, dude. When, yeah, with well, fucking um, Josh Brolin and Emma Olsen, culturally or, appropriating. What I, um, what what I like about Winders, what he does in this movie though, is that the, he lets the film really linger on a lot of yeah. scenes, and it it turns into like you. Uh, kind of observing and experiencing them secondhand, just like the angels, and it lets you sit with it, putting putting you in their shoes and stuff. And it's just a nice. I, I, was, I was very into this movie from the get go. And yeah, there's it, part of me, almost like the first half of this, which is very plot light, almost more in the second half. And that's maybe fair. that's because it was so novel to me before I'd adjusted to the film. But just the use of the subjective POV to show the environment and to show you. Which there is, and I didn't read up on the criticism of this, there are connections to be made about like the art of cinema and observation. It makes sense that a film director would make a movie about observation and how important observation is, but also the desire to do more. Um, you, ever, you ever think like that the effort I use in my creative pursuits, maybe I should just open up a soup kitchen and do something more tactile? well i've thought about like what kind of like use i could do with like document documenting or making some sort of documentary that would be impactful enough to like i don't know feel important or something yeah Yeah. because then i'm like how much of that i mean all art is validation to an extent yeah Um, i still get in my own head though about what's valuable and what's not and it's like no i you know uh i like you know entertaining people's fine i guess or but uh i i do think about like different possibilities with documents your, your stuff even even though our content is very niche um i think it provides value to people and there are things you've expressed in movies um things about like uh, the ennui of arcanes and summers or sure. of like youth or of um internet culture like there there are things that you've expressed that i don't see expressed in many other places at sure. all I mean, um and, and it you know it's not mainstream but that's fine but basically you know this movie it made me want to live life and to the fullest and but also not sweat the small stuff which is right so important made me more uh, it made me think more empathetically like I always try to be empathetic, but like you, every single person there is silent about their trauma, and the only way you're hearing that is through the ears of the angels, and so everybody's always got something hanging over them, 
and you gotta yeah. kind of navigate the world knowing that your problems are your problems but also like everybody has those problems you're not alone in your anguish and you can honestly through like being kind and listening fucking sure. and the movie comforts movie. you just like yeah. they comfort people yeah this movie did a really good job of representing interiority which is one of the weaknesses of cinema as an art form compared to literature um say um to writing where you can just say what a person is thinking um because you either have to represent it in the environment somehow but then again are you just representing emotions versus actual thoughts linguistically but if you want to do that you have to do a voiceover but what they did is the way people monologue in this movie when they're thinking it's not speech it's dialogue but it's yeah. highly stylized and I think that's intentionally. Yeah. So just me as an audience member, I'm like, I know this isn't what they're actually thinking, but it's stylized in such a way as to convey the complete range of emotions instead of just doing bland, you know, I don't know, shitty film noir, Blade Runner, theatrical cut dialogues. Over there. <laughs> well, yeah, but even like the spoken dialogue, at the, at like the climax of the movie where he's talking to her at the bar mm -hmm. is like heavily like poetic stylized uh Dips, it is and we're just seeing it translated and thank god that whoever translated this took the time to not just do a literal translation and make it flow because i'm sure there's idioms and stuff that we're not picking up on yeah because um, you know the lahein fucking uh subtitles that told me that the the dealer was mr walmart um <laughs> yeah you, you got some weird ghetto bootlegs sometimes. <laughs> you got like <laughs> um you, you i watched it on my subtitles that were like scratched in the back of a pack of <laughs> yeah, in the back alley. Uh, did you guys know that cassiel is an actual angel in biblical judeo yeah, it sounds yeah. familiar yeah. yes i didn't know that um just kind of reading into that I that was you think, uh kevin smith uh took from this movie when he made dogma and like did his it's so different i know it's so different but like i don't know it's like you weirdly see it does no, Kevin Smith, say God bless. and I look, I, we support Kevin Smith on this podcast or, um, to, a, to an extent, to an extent. Um, yeah. The, we love cop out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. Um, but no. does he watch movies like this often? Think? I think it, I, he does. I think, uh, he's just, um, his more, fans are more interested in here. I think more so him. he, he likes to get hype over shitty six out of 10, superhero movies yeah did he like black adam was he a black adam guy i don't know i don't think so i don't think anyone was but he uh did you see black adam casher yeah yeah okay that that says enough but it's just good. you know you know how much i like black Adam. yeah i i, I respect movie. smith for making exactly what he wants to make you know um but sometimes what he wants to make is yo shit. yoga hosers there's no coming back from that uh cop out no coming back from that I wonder well, there more, is because it's a studio movie, but I just yeah. wanted to make more shit like Red State, his most underfucking rated saying, film, man. dude. Red State's the shit. Red State was awesome, he, and uh, he, he, um, I get him wanting to address his life changing hardjack in Clerks Three, but he needs to move away from that shit. Fucking make some new shit. Yeah, he's just uh, kill himself. <laughs> no, but yeah. like he, um. He needs to like he's ha he's having a midlife crisis and dealt with it by making Clerks three. He needs to deal with it by making something completely fresh. Clerks four. No. no. <laughs> Clerks Ivy. Yeah. Give me um, more fucking creepy horror in the Appalachians involving fucking biblical fucking apocalypses. I'm cool with rip that. Michael Parks, but yeah. Um. Anyway. Yeah, this uh, is a great film. Solid. Uh. Four angel wings out of ten. Yeah, we don't rate things on the show because I don't like that. Except show. Cocaine Bear, which was a perfect five out of ten mid. Oh mid yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah, I'll rate things on Letterbox just because to participate with the website. But I've, I've kind of, I uh, on an official forum, a platform such as this, I do not like to rate things. I had a professor, playwriting professor in college, who we would read plays, and he would want us to rank one to ten. How was the dialogue? How was the spectacle? How was the plot character? And I would yeah. shit on, I had him three different classes. I would shit on him every time for that. I mean, yeah. he knew it. He's like, Scott, but you still got to do it. I'm like, I know. I'm just saying, I think it's dumb. He's like, I know. This is 
I've had you for three glasses now. We've had this. I'm like, okay, I just want to let you know. No. Have you guys seen A Matter of Life and Death? No, what is that? That's a movie from the 40s that involves uh, angel shit. And um, I highly recommend it. Um, I don't watch anything that's British. But basically, it's like um, there's like shit that happens and then there's a courtroom scene and it takes place in heaven and all this stuff and whether or not this person gets to do this or that and i, I don't it, it, it's it was way ahead of its time and it um it, i i can see where it might have had influence on this movie and and a lot of other movies so that's the official kino cowboy uh recommendation i also recommend the uh the Wallace and Gromit film, A Matter of Loaf and Death from 2008. Perfect. Perfect film. Because um, uh, that movie's uh, it's a 10 under- out of 10. underrated. Really um, uh, that's That oh. one gets a little nuts because Wallace's lover in that one is like <laughs> ape shit. There's like mannequins everywhere in her yeah. room and stuff. Oh, man. And if you want an angel movie that I would suggest that's not Angels in the Outfield, because that's the best angel movie. Um, <laughs> Touched by an angel. Did your mom ever watch that show? Yes, fuck that show. Uh, <laughs> is the uh, criminally underrated but superiorly Kino action film Legion. Oh. <laughs> okay. are you, how ironic are you being? Do you like that movie? Maybe. Hey, you can like that. You do, we don't do that fucking <laughs> bullshit. Like, uh, you guys don't fucking... I'm a fucking... I love shitty fucking cheesy we, uh, we, plot, we, we, plot driven action movies we've outgrown like the uh well i only like it ironically you like what you like you don't have to be a fucking oh i swear i i'm i'm, I'm so aware that it's actually not well made but i enjoyed it anyway. i love the shit out of legion care. i think it's the shit we're all fucking um, grown-ass men if you for like my, it, you one like of it. one of these years i'm gonna get i'm gonna get we we're gonna have a riddick cast we're gonna yeah, talk that's fine. all of the chronicles of riddick movies and you guys are gonna watch me beat off I watch Riddick I for you. Love those movies. <laughs> I'm gonna make Scott watch all nine Fast and Furious movies before the new one comes out. I might do it. If I'm, if I watch one a week, I'll be like right on. Time. I have two more Rocky movies: Creed one and two before Creed three. Cool, cool. I've done cool. that in five days. I yeah, used to be something big else coming out that I want to marathon. Is it Demon movie. Slayer, the Swordsmith arc? No, something I've seen that. Plenty of that I'm gonna like. Should I marathon before this again? I can't remember what it is. Um, but um, yeah, Wim Wenders. Next, we'll do his like five hour, four hour movie. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what it is. Uh, what's it called? It's gotta, be, it's gotta be way more fucking engaging than Brighter Summer Day. Hey man, Brighter Summer Day was worth it's watching. great. It's a great was, film. It's a great film that took me fucking almost an entire day to watch. <laughs> it's, it's... I watched it one shot. I yeah, well, I should have had like fucking Adderall or Coke or you something. You didn't pee? <laughs> yeah, no. no, that's the real thing. You didn't pee, Adrian? No. Whoa. I'm not a fucking old ass man. You do you need to get on that. You need to get hydrated, bro. I'm hella hydrated more than anyone. No, no, dude. You got to get more. Bullshit, dude. I drink a lot of fucking water. I drink a lot of water. I just also have a lot of shit. I love eat. water, actually. I I hate when people are like, "Ugh, water, dude." I love. Dude, imagine water. going up to a kid in Africa and saying that. Oh, oh my god, water. sorry. Water's, Water's gross. gross. Shout I out drink the fuck out of water. I I only drink peace tea. Uh, again, our sponsors are Adrian's Book and Keystone Light, <laughs> the authentic Deutsch beer. <laughs> Keystone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, until the end of the world, 287 minutes. Okay, that's doable. Yeah, well, it sounds like it lasts until the end of the world. That joke that'll is be, sad. That'll be a solo Kino rant cast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's got, uh, or, uh, Sam owns the criteria out of that. That's pretty he, cool. Of course he does. He would. Yeah. Does he, he own would. a 401k? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We miss you, Sam. Kind of. Yeah. Um anyway. Uh now that made it sound like Sam's bullshit. dead. Sam's not actually dead. <laughs> Sam's not he dead. just doesn't do the podcast as often anymore because he's busy with life. Yeah, everyone's gotta figure some shit out, you know. Um like me. Except yeah. uh okay. I already have everything figured out. No, I'm a perfect, no, I'm a perfect human being. Nothing I left enlightenment. Nothing left to experience in life. Whoa. All right, all right, I feel like that sentence. sometimes. 
I'm gonna chug that. I feel like I feel like having a child is just so you can re-experience life vicariously through until you die. How would your stomach drop though if I said that and you I pull out an actual pistol? <laughs> Good, do it. No. Oh, well, that's Albanian in the world. Great. Whoa. There's no need to be like. All that. right, podcast out. Goodbye. Yeah, you're. Right. You know, I already have to deal with people who watch Taken and think the Albanians are sex traffickers. Fuck Taken. I am an anti-Taken on this podcast. That's my fucking pro Taken oh. three though. No, I don't know who the, who's the villain in Taken three. I don't know. Probably no, Mexicans Albanians. or something. Yeah, anyone who's not white, it will be the fucking answer to that. I will find any you. foreign. Also, like I'm so, I forget you. You said the you said the word foreigners twice, and there's nothing wrong with that. But like, I've heard it used several times as a slur against my dad. That like I forget that it's that it's just a normal word if used correctly. Any normal yeah. word with a southern enough accent sounds racist. Or if you just add dirty in front of it. Yeah. Well, I, I've I've seen a man say you fucking foreigner to my dad. And uh, uh, not... I'm sorry, Adrian. I thought we I could bet, pass this. I bet that guy doesn't watch films with subtitles. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's one of dude. Yeah, he's probably one of those fucking hillbillies that one time this fucking guy he's he was uh ordering spaghetti and he's like um now what is this mare in there no he fucking didn't you're a fucking <laughs> i liar. swear to god There's didn't no that guy want mayonnaise guy. on his salad that's what something? i fucking like died inside and i was like There's i got no out fucking of here way. oh it's red sauce <laughs> yeah, tomato red. sauce I, red is delicious. Dude. Red sauce. <laughs> we stand red road. forty here, dude. Stand crush forty. Oh yeah, dude, crush forty. No, uh, I'm more of a sugar ray kind of guy. All uh, around the world, three eleven. for me. You know how much I, I you're gonna get us. Uh, you're gonna get us taken down. They're gonna. Oh get, yeah, because how it sounds so is. similar to the actual song that it's gonna yeah. get flagged. That's because I'm a. I'm in a Sugar Ray cover band on the same time. We're called a uh, Sugar Gay, uh, and we're an all gay <laughs> Sugar Ray band. I'm glad we could really cram all. See, I feel like everything we said at the last five minutes of this podcast would have us demonetize if we said it in the first five. So I'm glad we waited. Yeah. Yeah. You have to like wait like 30 seconds to say fuck or something stupid like that. Makes Man. no sense. Advertisers. Sugar it's not advertising friendly. Sugar Ray fucks. Yeah. <laughs> that should be the title of the podcast. <laughs> Sugar Ray fucks. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll put up an alternative uh, for our Patreon. We don't have a Patreon folks. Maybe one day. Uh, hopefully this year yeah share this podcast around if you're somehow still at the end of this thing uh, and I then maybe if you're that much of a masochist uh, uh, I do want to thank people who watch by. this and, and if you could share it or even like or comment seriously call to action there yeah but... I hate that shit saying old oh, like and subscribe but man it does help a little bit we went up five subscribers smash that like button if you know what's real <laughs> <laughs> uh, no anyway um Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm going to go figure out what I'm going to eat next week. Playtime. Look forward to it.